Hello and welcome to Hot Issues, sponsored by the nation's builders, Gassam Cement. This week, we are taking a look at an aspect of education which has become quite topical. We are taking a look at the polytechnic. Why were they established? What has gone wrong with them? And if everything is going well with them, why is it that we are turning them into technical universities? Who qualifies to be a technical university and who doesn't? And if they don't, what would they do? Welcome to Hot Issues. Hello welcome back to Hot Issues and uh, it is sponsored by Gassam Cement, the nation's builders. And as I said in the beginning, we are taking a look at an aspect of education which has become quite interesting, quite topical indeed. We are talking about polytechnics. What is their relevant? Have they been relevant? Why did we even bother to establish them? And if they are not achieving their mission, what do we do with them? Is it sufficient to proclaim them as technical universities? What do they have to do to become technical universities? And so many other questions. And we are particularly privileged today to have with us in the studio Professor Nicholas Nsoa Nwama, the rector of the Kumasi Polytechnic. So you're welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Beyond Kumasi Polytechnic, what are some of the things that you do? Um, I write books. That is all. Um, I, I like writing, so I still continue writing uh, mm. books in statistics. I understand that you are also connected with other universities. Uh, yes, I am the chairman of Regent University College of Science and Technology. Mm. Yes. Mm. Uh, and you are also the chairperson of the Council of Rectors of Polytechnics. Yeah, I used to be, but uh, uh, my term ended and I handed over to uh, the rector of Borga Polytechnic. Mm -hmm. yes. In any case, why did we establish polytechnics? What were the mandates of polytechnics? No, the every country uh, has to rely on technical education. So um, there are two systems, the normal secondary school, the white color training, and then the technical and vocational training. It happened that um, secondary schools were established so that when you finish um, uh, basic school, you can move on to do um, secondary education. Mm -hmm. But if you happen to have interest in, say, hands-on um, matters, if you happen to you want to use your hands, you will tend to go to, say, technical school. Uh, of course, there you combine both the practicals and training. The polytechnics were established so that those who go to technical schools will have an avenue to continue to progress. And so uh, initially the technical schools, the polytechnics were established um, to train middle level manpower. And that is what had been for some time. Mm. Now how come that uh, technical skills is associated with middle level manpower? Isn't it strange? Yeah, it is. And because technical persons could also rise to the top. So why middle level manpower? Yes, so that is the essence of what perhaps we'll be discussing. Because um, they were, the polytechnics were limited to the training of the middle level manpower. So you went to te te uh, technical school, then you have to, those days you, would, you wouldn't have to do uh, non-tertiary programs, some technical from, from technical school, they, they had some other programs you would do uh, technician one, technician two, before you even go to do the, uh, the polytechnic, the H&D. 
So it's like you once you take the technical education, then you are limited. You are in some jacket. You are in some cage. You couldn't go uh, further. So mm -hmm. that is how the, the technical education had been in the country for a very long time, perhaps even up to today. Did the polytechnic, uh, uh, polytechnics achieve their mandate? Yeah, to some extent, yes. To some extent, yes, because uh, we were to train, as I said, the middle manpower uh, for the uh, transformation of the economy. It only turned out that um, uh, sometimes when you, there, there are no, not many industries which can give the uh, requisite training, the hands-on training to the students. So sometimes they might finish and might not have had serious practical training. Uh, but other than that, I would say that to some large extent, we've been able to achieve a lot. If you, you go to the polytechnics and you see what students have been able to do, what lectures have been able to do, some of the inventions, some of the um, new things, innovations they brought, I would say that to some extent, they be able to achieve the mandate. Beyond the innovations and things, were they able to, you know, fill the middle level positions for which they were being trained? Were those positions even available? Um, initially, uh, there were the issue of, oh, the polytechnics or the HND was equivalent to first degree, so the struggle was there. Once it was now determined that HND was uh, lower than the first degree, then it meant that they should look for uh, places for, uh, for them. Initially, even if you had HND, it was difficult to get places. But now um, they are all senior staff. Uh, in fact, the, when you go to the ministries, the senior staff category starts with the HND. But as you had said, um, industries are not there, jobs are not there, and so you train a lot, a lot of them, and uh, you can get few who would get em employment. But the polytechnic education is not just training students to go and look for work. Um, there, consciously, there is a, a program like entrepreneurship, which is to train them to uh, equip them with the ability, capacity to establish their own uh, businesses, to generate their own um, yeah, uh, businesses and employ uh, others. So we would not say that because perhaps they are not getting jobs to do, means that um, they have not been relevant. Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, sometimes, as I said, once they can establish their own businesses, the, that is to me even the essence, the most, the more important aspect of the training than finishing and going to look for a job to do. What about the polytechnic itself? I mean, did it have what it needed to be able to train the middle level manpower? Teachers, for example, basic infrastructure? Yeah, yeah initially, it, when the polytechnics were converted to tertiary, it was difficult because uh, you could, at that, that, that time, even have people with, say, first degree doing some teaching initially. And um, um, that was, it lasted for some time. But as I'm talking now, the polytechnics don't take uh, anybody with first degree to teach. In fact, if you even have your one year master's, you are not eligible to teach at the, at the polytechnic. So for the manpower now, as I said earlier, it was not that easy. But now, almost all the protagonists have uh, uh, the qualified lecturers who do the, the, the teaching. In fact, and also because the National Accreditation Board is insisting and uh, everybody, every protagonist wants to be careful. So they don't validate some of the uh, requirements of the uh, National Accreditation Board. What about the basic infrastructure? Yeah, uh, we have. We have. I would say that uh, also, also initially, because I say initially because people still think of the polytechnic um, like 15 years back, 10 years back, the way the polytechnics were. So that's how the impression people have about the polytechnics. But if you go to the polytechnics now, 
um, go to the labs and the workshops. I mean, we are well equipped. In fact, three years ago, for instance, government gave a, a Massive Polytechnic and Takrari Polytechnic $3 million each. And they, we brought equipment from Amatro Incorporated from the US. And that is a, a ultra-modern uh, lab. I mean, some December, when we had a conference of, uh, when we have a, a conference of uh, Polytechnics in Africa, there was a conference in Kumasi. When they came to Kumasi, the directors and the vice chancellors of the technical universities came to Kumasi to see that uh, laboratory workshop, they were marveled, mm. couldn't believe their, 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 their eyes. And so was uh, Takrari Polytechnic. And as I'm talking now, um, Kofodia Polytechnic is also being equipped with the same uh, equipment. Uh, whole Polytechnic is also going to benefit most at Tamale, most of the protectors are now going to benefit from what we benefited some three years ago. So the equipment, equipment you can uh, get. But of course, I mean, like any um, uh, institution, you can't say you have everything. But at least what can we have to train, especially the technical programs we have. What are some of the things you don't have? Uh, let me say uh, that maybe um, computers, but even the computers you, you, you have, but perhaps you don't have the, that big lab where it will be one-to-one -one, uh, uh, correspondence, where a student to one computer. That is that. Is that. But I also believe that um, perhaps there could be uh, other aspect, other equipment that we require. For instance, um, chemical, our place, chemical engineering requested for some type of equipment. And they needed that uh, for the training and also for generation of uh, income. And uh, th we didn't have uh, them, them, even though we, we promised that we were going to add it to, because it was not budgeted for also. So I know that there are certain you don't have because of the um, request I get from the, the departments. Then I know they don't have this, they don't have that. But other than that, I think um, uh, most of the polytechnics uh, have um, more than necessary. When you come to um, our um, furniture department, for instance, the equipment uh, they have I mean, this is modern. And we only need to uh, use them appropriately and so forth. Are you adequately funded? Uh, for funding, because you can imagine 10 polytechnics, uh, now 10 uh, universities, and 39 uh, colleges of education. So that one, uh, if you want to uh, be well equipped before you do anything, you, I don't think you reach there. But we ourselves, fortunately for us, uh, the school fees we collect, uh, government doesn't take, the, we are allowed to use the school fees to do certain things. So most of the uh, things we do are from internally generated uh, income. But of course, internally generated income is also for government, it's not for the institution. It's just that government doesn't have money to give you. So he said, use that to do, uh, I mean, to fund whatever. So we can sometimes put our buildings uh, from the IGF. Sometimes we also get funding from uh, Get Fund uh, for some of our, our um, buildings, uh, some of the equipment, uh, staff training. Uh, but where we don't have, um, then we use, uh, we try to generate in income. The protectors try to do to do to do that. How much of your budget is catered for by government? Our government pays uh, salaries. So for salaries everything is paid for. Uh, apart from that, uh, as I said, infrastructure we get some uh, funding from get fund. Of course that is also government. But subvention it, it doesn't come that uh, Often, so we don't rely on the subvention. 
Yeah. As things stand now, if you're not charging school fees, are you likely to survive? Oh, no, no, but it's not possible that you charge school fees. Uh, w w why? No, if, no. Uh, everywhere in the world now, they are, we are charging school fees. It's That's not the, everywhere in the world. The <laughs> we know that it's not everywhere in the world. But at least in our part of the world, mm -hmm. you have to charge school fees uh, not much. Not like a pri some private universities or so for private institutions, but uh, it's shared responsibilities. So uh, government contributes and then uh, parents also contribute a lot. In fact, if we're to generate income to pay ourselves, the school fees could have been tripled or whatever. But uh, government pays, uh, pays uh, salary. So whatever we charge them is for the running uh, the day to day activities. How much would an average polytechnic student be paying as fees? Um, the, about thousand pay per annum. Thousand cities. Cities, per, thousand cities per, per annum, annum. Sometimes less than that. Mm. That's the total annual salary of some workers. Oh yes, yes. But uh, in, in this world, it, it, that that it happens. Yes, I agree. But thousand per the whole year. So it means a semester is about 500. Sometimes it's less. Sometimes it's less than 1,000. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, what courses are the Polytechnics running? Uh, what courses were they running? OK, we are running um, technical programs. For instance, um, uh, uh, engineering, uh, mechanical, civil, electrical, electronics, and then um, um, I've, I've talked of mechanical, and uh, we run, for instance, chemical engineering as well. Yeah, and then we also have applied sciences. So we have catering and, and vocational. So we have catering, uh, we have uh, creative art, we have uh, say statistics, uh, we have computer science, uh, and uh, some we have estate management. Some of us run um, pharmaceutical sciences. That is. Uh, Dispensing technology, um, and then and then we also run some business programs. Uh -huh. So these are so the uh, business programs are certainly not technical. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the the uh, the art said uh, uh, applied arts and so forth. So it doesn't talk of only the technical, but it's also applied arts. Mm. So we can run that and uh, and. Uh, um, if even you produce, let's say technical people have produced everything, you need somebody to market that. You need somebody to do the accounting while you are in your factory, your industry. You need somebody to do the accounting, so you need that. Somebody to procure, do the procurement, so you need to train the procurement. So it's a total training. That well, what give. about the creative arts? Uh, creative art uh, is fashion design, fashion design textiles. Uh, um, we also have uh, um, the Accra, uh, ceramics, Kotakra, for instance, it does ceramics and so forth. So these are the creative arts. Which are also quite technical. Yeah, technical, vocational, mm. yes. Do you do some of the courses which are done by other institutions, like NVTI? like a crowd technical training yeah. center and so on. What's the difference between a polytechnic and yeah. those institutions? Yeah, there is a non-tertiary program. So they are at a lower uh, level. So when you finish their program, then you come and do a, a higher the, the, uh, program at the polytechnic. So ours is a continuation of whatever they do. They do the, um, so furniture, for instance, if you do, you do go and do carpentry down the carpentry joinery. Then you come to uh, the Polytechnic to do uh, interior architecture, furniture, and so forth, uh, wood, wood engineering, and uh, others. So. Hello, welcome back to Hot Issues. And we are taking a look at Polytechnics, their current state and possible future state. And we are fortunate to have with us in the studio Professor Nicholas Nsoa Nwama, Rector of the Kumasi Polytechnic. So just before we went on break, 
uh, indicated that I wanted to find out the line of academic progression for graduates. Initially, there was no progression at all. You finish Polytechnic, HND, that's it. And, uh, but after some time, uh, the universities started running what you call top up. So it's like the, you finish each and the three years, and initially, you, if you wanted to continue, you have to go and start first year. Yeah. But at a point in time, they realized that the products were different. I mean, it's not like, like three years that they spent, they hadn't done anything. So they now introduce the top up, which is two years after. So they go to third year and finish with them. And gradually, the polytechnics also started developing our own top up, which is a direct continuation of whatever they've done there. And to me, that is even more uh, credible. That's better because uh, the university one, it's not that they planned for you. They are doing their four years. So you finish the, the HND, you go and they fit you into the third year. There w could be some programs, courses that you hadn't done before that you, uh, you wouldn't do because they did it the first and second years. So you go and continue from third year and finish. And there were some courses that uh, you have done that they hadn't also done. So you continue whatever they have there. But with our BTEC or our top up, which is also bachelor's, um, we look at what we have trained you earlier and then add on. And so it's more di uh, uh, direct. The second aspect, the difference, second difference is also that the university is a, is a uh, let me say, white color. I mean, that is the, uh, the normal uh, conventional university training. You had come to do um, technical programs or you've done hands-on. In fact, even our uh, business programs are mostly hands-on because they are uh, uh, internship, uh, um, industrial attachments, and so forth. So you have done the hands-on, the combination of theory and practice. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the university, then you go and do continue with the theory. You've lost the practical aspect. So, but our case, you continue with that, the same aspect, the same training. And now we have even introduced what we call the competency-based training. That is about 60, 70% practicals and 30, 40% theory. And so now the polytechnic students can continue. Unfortunately, it's not all the programs that we have the DTEC, uh, the top up. So where we don't have then they go to the university to continue and then lose the technical nature of the programs they've done before. So what then is the compelling need to transform polytechnics into so-called technical universities? Oh, you see, the, the top up I'm talking about is uh, finishing the HND first. Uh, it's not, so the, the, let's you know the difference properly. It's, it's all BTEC, it's all bachelor's, first degree. But the, what is happening now is you go to, uh, you finish, say, technical school. Or let me even start with secondary school. You finish secondary school science. You want, to, you want some hands-on training. Mm -hmm. So you go to the techni uh, polytechnic. Once you, go, you, you choose to go to the polytechnic, means you can't do a four-year degree program. You have to pass through h and Once you decide that I've got my AAA, but I want hands-on, your option and that, so because of that, I'm going to a polytechnic. Once you decide to go to polytechnic, it means at this current stage, you have to go and do three years of h and higher national diploma. Then when you finish the higher national diploma, the requirement is that go home, stay for two years and get some job to do uh, before you can continue. So two of us uh, finished uh, uh, St. Augustine's College. Uh, you chose 
to go to uh, you, uh, you all did science, and you decided to go to university because you want the theory aspect. And I decide, oh me, I want to do uh, uh, go to polytechnic. The moment I decide, you will finish your first degree, and perhaps your masters. When I will still be struggling to do uh, first degree because I'll finish my three years, you will finish four years, then I'll finish three years, then. I have to go and do two years of uh, go find a job to do two years before I go to university or wherever to do another two years. So seven years to get your first degree. Your counterpart has finished and might have even done his master's and perhaps has even started his PhD. So what, what's wrong with that? Two of it have the same grade. Mm -hmm. I decide that I want hands on. Mm -hmm. And then you decide that, oh, you want to go, uh, so you, I decide to come to the polytechnic. Mm -hmm. And you decide to go to the university uh, with the same level of knowledge. I, it will take me seven years mm -hmm. to get first degree. Mm -hmm. It takes you four years mm -hmm. uh, to, do, uh, to get uh, first degree. Mm -hmm. Why can't I come to the polytechnic or a technical uh, training institution? And also do the same four years and get my uh, first degree. Why do I have to pa definitely have to pass through H and D first? That's let, let, let's take students, yeah. comparable students, same level of intelligence yeah. and so on, yeah. same degree of passes and so on. Yeah. One decides to do law, mm -hmm. and one decides to do history. Yes. They don't spend the same years in school. Yeah, different professions. But here, we, let's talk about the same thing. We won't all want to do civil engineering. Mm -hmm. It's the same, civil mm -hmm. engineering. Mm -hmm. So I come to Polytechnic. I will do three years, H and D. You will go and do four years, the first degree. Mm -hmm. And then I will be told that you, don't, you can't start immediately. Go and find a job to do, do two years before you can go and do this thing. So I to do the... Uh, first degree. So my colleague is already a civil engineer, perhaps has finished his master's in civil engineering. I'm struggling with my civil engineering. Mm -hmm. Four years. I'm struggling. Yeah, but it. the purpose of education is not about that. Yes. The purpose of education mm. is to move the national economy. Yes. Is to do the things that will bring us development. Yes. And we have decided yes. that there's a shortage in the in, in, in the availability the yes. middle level personnel is not available. Yeah. So we are training people specifically yeah. to fit there. Yeah. Why do you change that for them to look like any other uh, other university product? Okay. The middle level you are talking about. Yes. Uh, the first degree uh, mm -hmm. to some extent is also a middle level. In other words, the the work that the first degree will do and the work that the H and D will do doesn't much a uh, difference. So, so they are more or less the, the same. So if I finish my first degree, and I can, because I, my polytechnic is hands-on, I will still do the work, uh, the work, but I will do it better with the first degree. Because see, you have come to spend four years. Fantastic. That's yes. the point. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Yes. Polytechnic education yes. is not the same as regular university education. Uh, correct. One is hands-on. Yes. One is more according to you. Yes. Tilted towards theory yes. and, and pursuit of academic, you know, things yeah. as well. Yeah. So they are not the same. They are not. So why do you expect uh -huh. that they will all behave the same way, mm -hmm. spend the same years in school, mm -hmm. and acquire the same certificates? Not the same certificate. The one certificate is competency based. It's, you see, that's what we call our B Tech Bachelor of Technology, mm -hmm. and this one is BSc, so so and so. Mm -hmm. But all of us should be given the opportunity mm -hmm. eh, to do the the first degree. My, my case, I will do more of practical work. Your case, you do more of book work. So the two are... are, are so so at, the end, at the end of mm -hmm. your polytechnic training, yeah. you get an HND, yes. which shows that you are hands-on. Yes. So yes. At the end of four years of university education, yes. mm -hmm. you get a bachelor yes. of, of whatever. Yes. Isn't that distinction enough? Yeah, but the, the BTEC, the four year the B tech mm -hmm. is also hands on. So we are trying to say that you see the hands on is it has nothing to do with 
uh, uh, we are talking about the, the number of years you spent, which is four years, which will give you the hands-on training. So your training is different from this person's training. Uh, you, you all have the first degree, but yours is different from the, the his. Why is the first degree so important? Oh, you know. I, 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 why do yeah, you necessarily have yeah. to have a first degree? Yeah. When you're talking about building a nation, yes. using education, yes. why is the first degree so important? The first degree is important. The first reason is that it determines the level you will be. Mm. The first degree. It determines where you will be in, in, in employment. So, and you can do the same things that... Uh, but, but, Master, yes. Professor, yes. should it, should it determine? What? No, but Ghana does, no, it, it, maybe it, should, it may not. When you go to the U.S., for instance, uh -huh. I know that for the U.S., they're more interested in your capacity, exactly. ability to do exactly. But in, in the country, in, in Ghana, in most African countries, mm -hmm. it matters. What they, they call, the, this thing you have matters. Uh, so, 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 so how do we correct this? Do you correct this by, by mowing down the polytechnic system and building something else in its place? Or you correct it by looking at job opportunities and the qualifications for entry and so on? Which one do you do? No, you see, it's in the name, you could, you could have still maintained the name polytechnic eh? mm -hmm. and you could have done the four-year degree. The four-year. The name wouldn't have mattered. We could even have done the HND. Yes, and, and restructured mm -hmm. the public and civil service in such a way mm -hmm. that first degree holders don't have such a huge advantage over HND people. Is that not possible? No, it is possible. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing is that we are, we are now talking about somebody restructuring that, which is independent of the student. It's not the student's capacity or the institution's capacity to do that. The person, for all this while, nobody has done that. Eh? So these people are always dis disadvantaged, always. You, let's take another... Is it not the same government which is turning polytechnics into yeah. technical universities, yes. which would have had to restructure the public and civil service? No. Isn't it the same government? Yeah, it is the same government. Yeah. But you see, you are also talking about uh, uh, levels where uh, uh, the, the, your, your child, your, if you have a child, eh, let me give you another example. Maybe mm -hmm. that will be explained. You go to a technical school. Uh, the two of us decide that we want to go to second, secondary school. I mean, second level school. So you, one decides to go to secondary school, uh, the normal secondary school. One decides to go to technical school. And then the moment you decide to go to technical school, you know where you are heading towards. You are heading towards polytechnic. You are heading towards polytechnic. And once you head to polytechnic, eh, you know your limit. At a point, there's no way you can go further. Those days, especially those days. When I was in elementary school, I always give this example. When I was in elementary school, we were the Oga in the village. First, first, that. Then we got somebody from Accra who came and took over. He was brilliant, always normal. He was the first student. Then the father was a mechanic. So he decided to go to technical school, hoping that he could become engineer. Yeah. And I went to a training college. Yeah. Even though I, went, I didn't go to second school, I went to training college, I was able to do, I mean, A levels, A level because of subjects. And you see where I have reached. He went to technical school, brilliant. Our first boy went to technical school. When he finished, he had to go and do, uh, now go to Polytechnic to go and instruct to do Technician 1, a Technician 2. And go, that time there was no HND. So he ended as what? Nothing. I mean, I mean that's where he ended. But this uh, somebody, if he had gone to secondary school and there was opportunity there uh, for him to go to secondary school and had gone to secondary school, by now could have been a, a, a higher distance. Yes, but, sir. But, but, but the question I'm asking yes, yes. is that. Is the solution yes. transforming polytechnics into universities? Is that the solution? No, you see, it's it transforming into technical universities. Not is, just that, is that ordinary. the solution? Yeah, the solution is that give every child eh, the opportunity to rise, as you put it, uh, to rise up to any level 
in his uh, area of endeavor. Based on capability, not, exactly not the so. showing of a certificate. No, based on capa capability. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, like my, my, this I'm talking about, his capability could have taken him far. Sir, but he didn't have the opportunity. Prof. Yes. Mm -hmm. What university did Einstein go to? You see, that is the good thing. The, he, Einstein, which university did he go to? No, I agree, I agree with you. It's not the university matter. But which university did Bill Gates go to? I agree with you. It's not. I mean, those those places you are talking about, those places, you can, you can even do arts eh, and go and do medicine. You can do arts and do pharmacy. Those places. But in, in Ghana and most African countries, th those opportunities are not there. So now we are talking about opportunities available to people, creating the opportunity for people to do. They have created the opportunities there, so they can go to do anything at all you want. But here, you need to create opportunity. And the way of, one way of creating opportunity for our technical people, those who could go to technical school, is to let them know that now if I go to technical school, it's possible for me to also become a doctor in so-and-so, uh, in whatever I want to do like any other colleague. So I can now decide to go to technical school. Other than that, our technical schools will collapse. And you know, the engine of growth yeah, is based on uh, your technical uh, schools and technical education and so forth. Germany is growing because they have developed their technical uh, educa education. But their polytechnics have not been converted to technical universities. They are oh. still polytechnics. No, you know, you know, in the UK, the polytechnics are still polytechnics. No, no, no. They've converted uh, so many years back. When? Oh, yeah, yeah. So many, in UK, it's, uh, more than 10 years back. UK, found out, more than 10 years back. Uh, South Africa, more than so many years back. Soviet Union, mm -hmm. where I was trained. Mm -hmm. yeah? Even though the polytechnics could train up to PhD those days, mm -hmm. there. Now they've converted all of them to, tech, to universities. But if polytechnics could train up to PhD there, yeah. Then the reason for converting them to universities yeah. is not just to enable people to progress oh. on the academic ladder. Yes. There must be other reasons. Yes, you see, I told you there they could mm -hmm. uh, train up to PhD there, mm -hmm. not in Ghana. When I went to Kumasi Polytechnic, sir, let's yeah. let, let's stick with my question. Yeah, but I'm I'm explaining. D just a minute. Yes. Just a minute. Let's mm -hmm. get the question clear. Yes. Mm -hmm. The problem here mm -hmm. is that it takes a long time for people who go through technical school and polytechnics and so on yes. to get a first degree. Yes. We are trying to correct that. Yes. In the Soviet Union, that problem did not exist. They it, could train, the polytechnics could train yes, way after at, PhD. Exactly. So the reasons for the conversion mm -hmm, there mm -hmm. and the reasons for the conversion here mm -hmm. may not be the same, mm -hmm. are they? Yeah, no. They may not. But I'm telling you that here there was no possibility of training anybody in the polytechnic to a higher degree. It was not there. And that's why I was... It was there. It was, that's why I was giving you an example. You explained, sir, 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 mm -hmm. sir. You explained yes. that students <laughs> in the polytechnics mm -hmm. could do top up in the polytechnics yes. to get first degrees. Yes. Which means that from the first degree, they could go to second degree after mm -hmm. PhD. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. Alternatively, mm -hmm. they could go back to the universities mm -hmm. and do top ups, yeah. which would take them on the academic ladder. Yes. So the possibility for them rising to the top of the academic yes. ladder was there, was wasn't it? Was there if you, you decide to abandon your technical hands on training, but not the polytechnic? You see, that's what no, I was. No, no, sir. No, that, sir well, no, that's sir. what I was saying to you. From your explanation. No. From your the, own mm -hmm. explanation. I, I want to explain to you. Polytechnic students who yeah. graduated with HND yes. could do top up yes. from the polytechnic. Yes. This time, which factors in yes. the need for them to have hands on training. Okay. That's according to your own explanation. Yes, so that's what I want to explain from there. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, but that's the highest you could go. The highest. Which is the highest? The, the, that BTEC, the uh, two year top up. That's the highest you could go. And I was giving you an example. You mean if you got a, a, a B tech, you, you couldn't do a master's? That's why I'm, that's why I'm giving an example. Okay. Them, that when I went to Kumasi Polytechnic, I brought in professors from South Africa in statistics, South Africa, U, uh, Canada, Sierra Leone, that wanted to start a master's and PhD program in statistics. We had a very strong statistics department. The regulatory body said, "You are a polytechnic. Your limit is up to HND." 
You can't do that. I said, why? Because the, the staff I had, the professor I had, even the, that time, most of the political universities didn't even have. But the only reason they gave was that you're a polytechnic. And as a polytechnic, you have your limit. And so you, you, you cannot do that. So up to now, we are only running the highest. You can go is BTEC, the bachelor's. That's all. So if they were to go to the allow staff, I mean students to continue to so so, then perhaps uh, perhaps the name like the Soviet Union at that time, the name didn't matter. The name wouldn't have mattered. But they linked the name to the level you can go to. Hello, welcome back to Hot Issues. And uh, Hot Issues is sponsored by Gassam Cement, the nation's builders. And we are talking to Professor Nicholas Nsoa Nuama, rector of the Kumasi Polytechnic. Now, so we're, we're haggling over <laughs> the opportunities for continuation yeah. and so on. And you, you mentioned your own example mm -hmm. of trying to set up a statistics department to produce master students and, and so on. Mm. But the point is that your students could go to tech and continue with their masters. Then, then they've lost, you see, let's see the two training, mm -hmm. the conventional university, traditional university training, mm -hmm. the polytechnic training. Mm -hmm. Ours is hands on, we are training the people with entrepreneurial skills so they can go and use their hands to do certain things and so forth. So they are, uh, it's about, 50, as I said, 30, 40 theory and 60, 70 uh, hands on. So we have different mandate. So the moment the student leaves this and goes here, you have lost the, the, the uh, as amount of money government has paid him to train him for this purpose is gone. So, so that's why we don't encourage them to go uh, there. We want them to continue with the hands-on, the practicals, so that they can uh, uh, assemble cars like Kumasi Polytechnic has done. Uh, they can do those things that uh, are practical, that they, they, they will encourage them to do. That is why we do encourage them to go and, and, and take an another path. We have decided to take two paths. Why do crisscross? I'm sure you know or you've heard about Professor Akila Kwasoya. Yes, yes, my own uh, uh, vice chancellor, former vice chancellor. Very respected figure. Oh, very, yeah, I respect in him. Law so much. and education and yeah, so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's kicked against this conversion to technical universities, the conversion of the polytechnics to technical universities. Are you familiar with his views? I hear, I hear, some, I hear something like that. Uh, yeah, uh, but I didn't. I really don't know exactly what he was talking about because, you know, as I said, he's my vice, uh, former vice chancellor, so uh, I really didn't want to discuss. Uh, so you didn't read what he said? Yeah. No, but for me, uh, what I took from it is the, the, these issues that we are, we are discussing. It's like uh, people up to, up to now, people don't think that the protection has gone a long way. And we are now capable. We have a lot of uh, lecturers, well-prepared well lecturers, with equipment, everything to do whatever we need to do. Uh, they always think of the old polytechnic. I, I, as as, as um, I'm talking now, if you come to see much polytechnic, and it happens in other polytechnics, but I know too much about the commercial polytechnic. We have about eight professors. Mm. I mean, people can't imagine that, perhaps they don't even know that we have that, uh, that number there. We have more than 50 PhD holders. As I'm talking, we have about uh, almost 70 also outside doing PhD. We are giving them scholarship to go and do PhDs. And they, 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 some are even coming, and some have come already. Um, we have about almost 100 senior lecturers. I mean, the, if you come and see the quality of lecturers we have and the, the facilities. The quality is not in their certificates, sir. No, no, but, but it's there because we are producing. You hear what Kumasi Polytechnic is doing, assembling electric cars. Uh, yeah, uh, but, but I'm just making the point. Yes. That the quality of lecturers yes. is not in the kinds of certificates they hold. No, the, the, 
it, 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 it also from the pro output, you see. So you can measure the quality first with the certificate because that one shows that they have been tested. That's the preliminary, preliminary indication. Yes, preliminary indication. They have been tested by authorities to say that these people, they qualify as so and so. And then when they come, you see the work that they do. And that's, that's where the uh, senior lecturers and professors come in. Mm -hmm. So you are right, the, the certificate alone is not enough. So come and prove that, yes, you are, you are what you are. And then you write, you do inventions, innovations, and then you are promoted. That's why we talk about senior lecturers. As I'm saying, we have about 100 senior lecturers. Out of a total of 270 uh, teaching staff, about 100 senior lecturers, we have eight professors. That tells you a lot. Uh -huh. So I think that mm -hmm. they, sometimes they think about the polytechnics so many years back, not now. Now, so you mentioned invention by some of the polytechnics. Kumasi, what have you invented? Oh, we have a, a, number, a number of them. We had uh, this solar wheelchair. It's, uh, it's, it's powered, we have a wheelchair that is powered by solar. So no, nothing, you just sit in, then you are going. Uh, we, we have now assembled electric car which is different from any electric car. Yes, Kumasi Polytechnic. From Kumasi Polytechnic. Yes, yes. You built an electric car. Electric car, which is different from any electric car in the world. And uh, a professor from one of the East African countries, K. Mechanical Professor, said it when we were preparing it. He said, oh, if you're able to do this, then it's a, a revolution in electric uh, car assembly. When I went to China in March, and I was trying to, I went to a factory, electric factory, a car factory, and I wanted the body, how we can get, give us the body. They didn't believe that really we'll be able to do that because China had tried it so many times. It, up to, they have not been able to do that type of electric car we've done. We have just uh, adored it. We are uh, using plastic waste to uh, uh, produce a diesel, petrol, kerosene. And we demonstrated, we used it when we had a congregation last two years to power our generator. And people were there. They're using plastic waste? Yeah, plastic waste. To plastic produce diesel? Diesel, yes. And How do you do it? Uh, we, from first, we designed, we had, we, we have my technical people and some uh, 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 just can company, some young people. I, I also picked from outside the Polytechnic. You see, uh, I'm always looking for innovation because sometimes when I'm sleeping, I'm thinking of issues, problems, and how to solve them. And I knew plastic waste has been a problem, a fuel is a problem. So when I'm discussing with people uh, the ideas, oh, how can you do this? And, and then I met people who had the ideas and I came and brought them together with my staff. And so they, they combined the theory and practice, I mean the, the practicals. And then they were able to come out with uh, with that. Are there uh, any other inventions? Electric car, yeah. uh, fuel from yeah. plastic waste, yes. any more? Solar, I told you about the solar. The solar powered the, wheelchair. Wheelchair. We had uh, 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 solar bags. When we had to do so a lot, uh, I, I tasked my staff, they should come out with something like that. So they manufactured uh, solar. Uh, bags, solar, uh, uh, something you can put your tablet in and while you are going it is being charged, and solar jacket and so forth. Solar the, jacket, what does it do? And so then when you are walking around, you have your, your, this thing, your uh, uh, phone inside it and it will be charging. If you want to play your uh, 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 MP, it's MP, MP3, MP3 is there. Is there is play all, all, all those things. We have a sm smoker uh, for fish, smoking of fish without uh, the smoke. See, so by the time you open it, the sm fish is smoked, but you don't have the smoke also going. We have a, a number of. The fish is cooked. 
Does it's if you're smoke. smoking fish, yeah, it's there smoke. must be smoke. No, it's smoke. Yeah. It's the smoke which smokes the fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the smoke <laughs> is inside. <laughs> I see your point. So a fish without smoke has not been smoked. <laughs> no, but the, the smoke is inside, not the one that you inhale. It mm. doesn't come mm. out for you to inhale. Mm. That's what I'm trying to oh, okay. say. So yeah. internal smoking. Internal smoking, yes. Mm -hmm. And we have had that. We very soon, I think we have a, a small fair to display some of the things. Have these inventions been properly patented? Uh, we are now working on them. You haven't painted, uh, patented no, them? We, are, we started the process because you need to have the designs and so forth. So we are, we are, we are doing What about that. the link with industry? Oh, we have a number of them. In fact, all our BTEC programs, we have about 11 BTEC programs. Uh, we, we do that in conjunction with industry. We we'll go, we we'll prepare the, di the, the uh, syllables, we invite them to discuss and so forth. And recently, because of this technical university thing too, we are formalizing all. Uh, we invited um, uh, about 100 industries in Ashanti region to come about a month ago. And we sat, sat down with them, how we, can, how we can help them, how they can help us. They can help us by giving us the opportunity to send our students there. We can help them so that by identifying problems there and then asking, uh, we trying to solve the problems for them. Yeah, there's one invention I forgot, Fufu making machine. We last two weeks, invent, last week invented the uh, uh, chobas in Kumasi to come and experience it. And they like they liked it so much. Mm. Yeah, so that I think they don't need to do this pound. We also have one that also uh, pounds with solar. We have mm. another one with solar that can do the proper uh, pounding mm. and so forth. OK. So thank you very much for, yeah. for coming. Yeah, thank and you. Uh, we're, we're most grateful to you. Yeah. Well, viewers, we've been having a conversation with Professor Nicholas Nsoa Nwama, the rector of the Kumasi Polytechnic. And he tells us about some of the wonderful things they're doing there and justifies the transition from ordinary polytechnics to technical universities. I do hope that all of us have learned a thing or two. And please don't forget that the best always comes to you from TV3.